Look at the hand clap. What a devil. Does. I'm not letting the devil take my joy. Amen. This is God's hour. Don't nothing belong to the devil, Eric. Nothing. This is God's hour. Look, somebody say, this is God's hour. Amen. We ain't worried about what they doing out there. Amen. God is still God. He's still doing uh, old school old, uh, Bible day stuff with some folk. Y'all saw the comedian lady joking. Did y'all see that? Bragging about she's double vaxxed with boosters and a shingle shot and something else she got. And she going on and on and and I'm traveling and I'm doing all this. Jesus must love me the most and fell out. I don't mean to brag. I don't care. But I want you to know double vaxxed booster flu shot. And I'm going to be honest. I have the shingle shot too. And I still get my period. What? Yes. Traveled. Went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. Look at somebody and say, God is still God. And look at the other person and say, don't play with God. You don't play with God. No, 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 you don't play with God. No, 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 no. God made that body. Don't play with him. Amen. I mean, she fell out. Yeah, it wasn't funny. It was real creepy. Amen. You know, when I see stuff like that, I get somewhere and start repenting. Oh, see, some of y'all too proud, you know, you, you think you ain't done. I, I repent for stuff I don't even know I've done. Lord, let's, let's, let's have a clean slate. It might be something that, it might be something I forgot to repent about, whatever it is. Folks start dropping and falling out. I'm getting before the Lord. Amen. Amen. Believer.com forward slash look at somebody say forgiving fellowship. Forgiving fellowship. Dot PDF forgiving fellowship. So this sanctified place, I want ABC to be a sanctified place. Yeah. Amen. If we're gonna be just like any old church, I don't want to be a part of that. If we're gonna be in here full of the world, I don't want to be here. Amen. If we gonna be in here not liking certain folks in here, I don't want to be here. Amen. How you gonna forgive the devil outside and you got beef with the saints inside? Oh, listen to these old whack hand claps. Oh, they sound terrible. But I'm go I'm telling you. I want this to be a sanctified place and I'm going to preach it till it gets that way. Amen. I want God to sanctify us. That's set apart. Peculiar. Different. Hallelujah. You want to be able to walk up in here with the devil all on you? That's illegal formation. I need to get a whistle and blow it. Illegal formation. Yeah, we're supposed to be fitly, knitly joined together. We are not enemies. If you got an enemy in here, something is wrong with you. Amen. Got no enemies in here. I love everybody in here. I don't care how bad you talk about me. And if you're talking about me, guess what? That don't do nothing to me. I'm going to keep preaching the gospel. That's, that's hurting you. You know who is hurting when you talk about folk all the time? No. 
your children. Look at them. You can find what you saying about folks right in your house. Oh, I'm in the house. That it's right in your house. If it's not there, it's on the way. Because that's where it manifests. Then you'll have a situation you can't control wondering what's wrong with this job? What's wrong with this? What's wrong? Well, shut up. You did that. You let that spirit in your house. Amen. I'll walk all the way back to the back is row and preach. If y'all gonna look at me funny. Anybody think about you? Amen. Look at somebody say forgiving fellowship. I need to walk back there anyway. <laughs> forgiving fellowship. That's what we gonna be. Oh, we need to learn how to forgive. You know, I posted the message from last week. And there was this one person that just kept commenting. I know you talking about forgive your parents, but what if they did this and what if they did this? So I, I, I deleted it. Then she posted it again. Honey, but what if they would have deleted it again? Don't you understand? You still got to forgive? Like, every time I delete you, I end up blocking them. Because once you start getting on my nerves, you out of there. You out of there, so now go on talk about me as the blocker. But I, I, I get tired of that. Did you hear what I said? You got to still forgive. There is no, you're not going to walk around with unfor- No, 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 let me take that back. You don't have to forgive. But if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. So I'm trying to help you not go to hell because you mad at somebody that ain't even thinking about you. See, that's the thing. You sitting up there mad at somebody and you can't sleep. And they sleep with crust on the side of their face. Not thinking about you. You're on your way to hell because of... And they're not thinking about you. They live in their life doing whatever they want to do. But their words somehow just cripple you and impair you. You don't give anybody that kind of power. And you know how you get that... You know how you get your power from them? Forgive them. They're only empowered by the grudge you're carrying. Some folks will put a grudge in you just so you'll think about them and pay attention to them. They'll create a situation just to keep themselves on your mind. Especially when they see you going on and enjoying life and all of that. Man, they will do something just so you would think about them every day. That's all the devil is doing. If the devil stopped doing what he's doing, he will be forgotten. No, I know I'm preaching. Yeah, I'm preaching. Let me get into this message. Amen. I know. This was, it was good, wasn't it? Why? Amen. I'm going to step on all the toes today. I hope you get a bunion. A spiritual bunion. Hope your foot is three sizes too big by the time this message is over. Amen. Because we're not, uh uh-uh. We're not walking around here feeling some kind of way about our own brothers and sisters in here. The saints in here. At our leadership meeting last week and I told them like, man, I mean, I just need a, I need team players and that's it. If you ain't on the team, you can't be a leader here. Amen. And you ain't the coach. You didn't assemble the team. I did. So you got to respect my choices. Oh, but God is in control, uh huh, through me. Because He called me to do it. I assembled this team. So you can't run it, you can't choose what you want. No, no, you, you join the team or you leave. Amen. 
Matthew, the Bible says in Matthew 5 and 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Now this is Jesus breaking the Old Testament down and bringing it into the new. So he says, whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of, of judgment. So you've heard this in the law, is what he's saying. But I say unto you, now Jesus is Jesus. He's the son of God. He's the son of the law and he is the word. So if he want to add an addendum, he can do it. Matter of fact, he can be it. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the what? And then the word was made flesh. So here is the word talking. So he's telling you, I know what you heard, but check this out. I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother, what? Without a cause. All that little without a cause. Oh, that's going to get a bunch of folks in trouble. What are you really mad at? What are you really mad about? If you answer me by saying, well, I heard or they said, then it's without a cause. I just preached. There's a bunch of folks going to hell. Right on this, they can't get past without a cause. Yeah, if that's your answer. Well, see, I heard. Well, see, they said. Well, see, I... That's without a cause. And because you're angry without a cause, you'll be in danger of what? Judgment. So while you're judging somebody without a cause, guess what's going to happen to you? And you wonder why bad things keep happening. You're being judged. Wonder why your kids just Wilding, you're being judged. I'm preaching in here. You don't have to like it. Yeah, you're in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, "Rock up," you ever said that before? Somebody like, what does that mean? <laughs> Rock up. That means you imbecile. You. What it really breaks down to is you with no purpose. You have no purpose. You get so mad at somebody that you want to strip them of their purpose. To make it like they shouldn't exist. Uh, there's nothing good about them. There's nothing good about them. Boy, some folks so mad at me that I don't know. Yeah. That they'll sit there and run me down. And if you say, well, what about this, though? This is good. Well, no. Just, there's nothing good about me. That's Raka. Yeah. Can I preach in this house? Yeah. Raka. He said, you're going to be in danger of the council. Because most of the time you say rocker to the one that's speaking truth to you, but you don't want to accept it. So you got to make something wrong with them so that you'll have a reason to not accept the truth that they just told you. Okay. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of what? Hell fire. You don't come, man, I remember when we was young. That's a, that's a whooping so quick. If we argue, me and Tanya, and if I say fool, a belt. My, my daddy don't even have to be home from work. But his belt would just come out of nowhere. Slash. Wait. They didn't play that. Remember, we couldn't say fool. Couldn't say it because the Bible said, don't say it. Well, see, but the, 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 the real reading, see, that's Aramaic. And so if you break the word, don't call your brother a fool. How about that? Can 
can the Bible just speak? Why are you trying to make it something else just so you can say it? Because the fool here represents somebody that don't know what they're talking about. So when someone really knows what they're talking about, but you accuse them of not knowing, then you just missed out on knowledge. And that knowledge could have saved you from the flames of hell. So now you're in danger of hell fire. Man, I'm preaching in this place. Y'all can look at me however. Ooh. However you want to. <laughs> the devil uses anger to create malice and ill will. That's why you're mad. You're not mad because you chose to be mad. You're mad because the devil wanted you mad. Because if the devil can make you angry, you're going to hurt somebody. Jesus touched on murder. It takes anger to cause murder. Anger is the prelude to murder. So Jesus is dealing with what's in your heart. Let's not wait till it gets to you stabbing somebody. Let's deal with it in its infancy. Why are you walking around with anger in your heart? Well, I didn't kill him. Yes, you did. I'm not judging them. I'm judging your heart. And in your heart, you killed them. But how did I kill him? Look what you're telling folks about him. Your flame of a tongue is worse than a knife. Thank you. That was Dre. I know. Y'all say, oh man, put a mic back there by Dre's hands. I need him sounding like Roger and Zap back there clapping. <laughs> When, when you are angry, you try to hurt people. Look at somebody, well, not me. When I'm angry, I no, no, no. When you are angry, the first thing you think is something bad about somebody. I mean, can we be human in here? I mean, some of y'all got a guillotine in your mind. Some of you tattooed it on your arm so you can look at it when you get mad. Head off. <laughs> I've seen people's heads get cut off. I've seen pianos fall randomly out the sky on folks. I've imagined it all. I've imagined them burning hell, skin coming off, worms eating them. No, see y'all, I know y'all all too saved for those kind of thoughts, but my mind in my head, I have a very vivid imagination. Amen, that's what preachers have. We have those imaginations, so I have imagined people, trains hitting them. You know, a speeding train. Ooh, that's going to just knock a lot of stuff loose, Elder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have. I had to repent. Because that anger, I was murdering them in my mind. And here's the thing. Once you murder somebody in your mind, you'll stop praying for them. You'll skip right over their name and God bless so and so and God bless so and so and they'll come here and you, the mm. <laughs> well, Lord help everybody in the name of Jesus. See, I know I'm telling the truth. I know I'm gonna go over here. Somebody over there don't want to admit that they skip over certain folk. You've done it. I mean, skip right over them and they live with you. That's the worst part. You walk around anointing the house. Touch this room, this room. This, mm. this room, this room in Jesus' name. Yeah, we human beings, man. We humans, and some folk just act the fool. Yep. Or a lot of times, and in most cases, there's something wrong with us that we just haven't addressed. Because no human, we're not supposed to get that mad at people. We're not supposed to carry grudges at people. So usually, there's something about ourselves that we're displeased with. Can I get to the bottom of this in this message, Elder? Let me take a little time to do this. It's impossible. No, when you are angry, you try to hurt people. It's impossible 
to harbor anger without it manifesting in your actions. This is why Jesus is addressing it because he knows they're going to change the way the gospel is spread if you feel that way. An angry man will mess ministry up because he'll use the Bible and ministry to try to get back at somebody if he's angry. And that's not what it's meant for. First John 3 and 15. Whosoever hated his brother is a what? So you've already committed murder just because you hate someone. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Meaning if murder is in your heart, God is not there. God, it's going to be a tough one for some folk. Anger always needs a face. So you're not just sitting up mad. Nobody is just sitting up angry. There's a face attached to it. Always. A lot of times it's not even the face that you've selected. You're mad at someone because of something someone else did. Yeah. That's not why you act like that. That's not why you fall out with everybody. That's not why your name is attached to mess all the time. That's not why. There's something someone did. There's something residing in you that shouldn't be. And it's causing you to behave that way. So anger always needs a face. The way you see others is always based on the condition of your heart. You know your eyes are connected to your heart. <laughs> yeah. So the way you see people. Is connected to the way you feel about yourself. <laughs> I'm so encouraged. It ain't going to hurt me. It ain't going to hurt me. None of the looks. None of the jazzies. It don't hurt me. And I'm so used to Jezebel. Come on, please. I've, I've, I've accepted the fact that she's just going to be in here. She loves this place. She does. She just loves this place. In here complaining. Oh, why they all got on sneakers? Why they ain't dressed up? What go to the dressed up church? Yeah, they, I mean, they just say, oh, yeah. Why the first rose reserved? Why people ought to be able, there should be no respect to person. Witch! Shut up! Why it's so dark? That's the one I've been getting lately. Oh, it's, the message was good, but can you turn the lights up? It's just so dark in here. Well, maybe we trying to keep you obscured. You know how to glow, witch. Pull your broom out. I said, you know why it's dark? Because we want it like that. And let me, let me Lord, forgive me. That, that, that was wrong. I should, shouldn't have come out that way, elders. It's dark because we have the multimedia presentation with the screens and stuff, and it shows up better when it's darker. That's the pastor in the elder. It just won't let me. Because I sure could just be like, <laughs> why are you so dark? <laughs> but Lord, forget. I, <laughs> I told Elder Carter I can only talk to you twice a week now. Because you're a bad influence on me. <laughs> I'm not 71. I can't just, I can't do that. <laughs> But how do you want to say it, man? Oh, 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 y'all give me a minute. Oh, Jesus, Lord, help me help the condition of my heart. But anger always needs a faith. You know, some folks, there's nothing you can do. 
to make them happy? Because they're not happy. So they're going to have a problem with everything. If we turn all the lights on and then bring the sun in here. Oh, it's hot. Why is it so hot in here? I mean, goodness gracious. We all take off the sneakers and wear roller skates. Oh, I can barely stand up. Oh, you can't satisfy. So oh, crazy, man. I ain't trying to please nobody. Amen. We're trying to please the Lord. Folks in there getting saved, getting delivered. Folks in there are healed. Folks in their marriages are healed. Folks in their families are healed. I'm gonna listen to a witch. How many churches you done tow up, witch? We ain't gonna let you tear this one up. Good things are happening in this one. The power of God is moving in this one. God has spoken prophetically in this one. So won't you go back to the other ones that you tow up that don't nobody want to go to because you was once there. Amen. That's how God destroyed her. Just shove her out the window. And when she hit the ground, get your horse and kick her around. Ride all on her head and stick that. Oh, God. See, Lord. I'm telling you. When y'all see me, when y'all find out I bought a horse, you'll know why. Uh oh. Pastor got a horse. Spirit of Jehu. The way you see others is always based on the condition of your heart. That's why you need to ch catch yourself. So when you feel yourself talk about somebody and you got that thing, you know, if you know, it's a, <laughs> you know that thing. <laughs> I can't even describe it, but you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, it's, it ain't like you just high side. Like your mama's so ugly. It ain't none of that. It's like a, it, it, it registers with something. It's like a, mm. no, 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 uh -uh. nah, she just, uh. your lip. <laughs> but you know, it registers down in the, in the gullet. <laughs> we ain't gonna have that discussion again. <laughs> the gullet and the gizzard. We're not gonna talk about that no more. It registers down in your gizzard. Do humans have gizzards, doctor? If they look like this, they might have a gizzard. They might have one. <laughs> but the, the way we see others is always based on the condition of your heart. A person that tries to cancel others See, this society is the cancel culture. So they just want to cancel you. You know what cancel mean? You're done. So they want to destroy you while you're living. So there'll be no hope for you while you're yet alive. But I'm trying to figure out how do you cancel somebody and you're still alive? Like, where did your past come from? You know why this culture wants to cancel folks? Because they feel canceled by their own life and their own decisions. They're miserable. Miserable. Whenever somebody's constantly attacking you, they're a miserable failure. Because if they had anything better to give you, they'd offer it. They don't have nothing but contrariness. Because they're a miserable failure. So they need you to fail with them. So they cancel you. So a person that tries to cancel others, I'm done with them. Oh, no, not them. That's cancel. You cancel a human and you still alive and had 
and you said it? So there's hope for you, but not them. Oh, you're better than them. Oh, okay, that explains it. The pastor is preaching. Yes, I am. You don't have to like it. It's the truth. Person that tries to cancel others despises himself and his own error. Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are what? That's why you acting like that, because it's in your heart too. You're not acting like that because somebody made you mad. Somebody that run and get a gun and chase somebody down. Man, you just, man don't you do me like that. that no, you, you, all of that you're doing is because something is in your heart. Now, they may have been the trigger, but you ain't going after nobody with a, with a gun ready to kill them and end your life. Unless something is severely wrong with your heart. And that's what they made prison for. So you can learn about why you act like that. You'll have plenty of time. Somebody can make you mad enough where you will destroy your own life? We are all operating in the kingdom by grace. Amen. Amen. All of us operating by the same grace of God. Sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide it. Us, all of us, we all have a measure of it, and that grace takes care of us. We're all operating in the kingdom by grace. Amen? Amen. To judge another through our anger makes us just like Satan, taking the grace away. So you're going to take somebody else's grace away like you don't need it? He is the accuser of the brethren because of his own anger and despair. If there was ever a, a, a real can't get right, it's Satan. He can't get right. And so he figures I'll destroy right because I can't get right. And that's what the rocker is. The person that comes to help you, I'll destroy that person. Because what they're saying is making me look more wrong. And I can't get right. I know I'm preaching in here. Second Timothy, one and nine. Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not according to works, but according to his own what? Purpose and what? Grace. Grace. This wasn't your decision by yourself. You decided you wanted him, but he decided he would give you grace. So how do you decide to not give grace to someone else? Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Matthew 5 and 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother had off against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to the brother, and then come and offer thy gift. In other words, don't come offer a sacrifice for sin if sin is in you. If sin is in your heart, your, your sacrifice is no good. They would bring the animal to the temple to offer the sacrifice unto God. But he's saying, leave it there when you remember that you and your brother got beef. Yeah, this is why a lot of your prayers don't work. He said, leave it there and go be reconciled when you remember that thy brother hath ought against thee. 
The word states that we will remember someone has ought against us. Didn't it just say that? God wants us to remember what we did and not what they did to us. <laughs> Plain and simple. The minute you start thinking about what folks did, start thinking about what you did. That'll cancel those thoughts. That will, uh, what they said, that, that will uh, level the playing field. Balance the equation. Your anger will begin to subside. Because you can't get that angry with them without getting angry with yourself. So we remember what someone, that someone has ought with us. God wants us to remember what we did and not what they did to us. This is cause for us to go to them and repent. When you know you wronged somebody, go to them. Amen. I mean, but they did stuff too. We're not talking about what they did. You remember what you did. The Bible said, remember what you did and put your gift down. Colossians 3 and 13. Forbearing one another, which is putting up with one another, but don't just put up with people. Forgive one another. We're not sitting around here in church tolerating people. We forgive them. We accept how people are and we forgive them. You don't know what people are going through. She didn't speak to me. She always walked by right by me and don't say nothing. You don't know. I do it all the time. Y'all. Oh, gosh. Folks have, oh, Lord. Anyway. I ain't no need even going in there because I mean they done accuse me of staring them down and oh you looked at me with rebuke in your eyes. What is that? Please tell me so I get them fixed. I don't want that in my eyes. I try to talk. Y'all know. Now, ABC, y'all know me, right? Don't I try to talk? I try to talk, walk, hug. I, man, that's why folks so bitter when they leave. You ain't going to get this anywhere else. Amen. Well, there may be somewhere. But most pastors, boy, you will get your wrist broke if you reach out to them. If you ain't reaching out to carry something for them, they ain't talking to you. And I stay, I try to talk to people. I just, oh. And you know, I don't even want to pastor any other way, Deacon. I mean, that's the way I am. I, like, I love God's people, so I just want to be with the people. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be on a stage, removed from everybody, can't nobody touch me. But it gets me in trouble because if I don't look you right in the eye, somebody see. <laughs> he looked at them longer than me. Because you just can't please everybody. <laughs> I've gotten long emails. And you know, I, you know if you send me a long email, you know what's going to happen. Okay. Got it. It's going to get skimped. Oh, but the first few lines, that's why you know to skip. Pastor, I just want to let you know that when you said so and so you was talking about me but <laughs> but here's my thing if I was talking about you so you came here didn't you I mean did you come here to hear your stuff talked about so you can get some help man but folk just uh, and you looked at me with the fire of Satan in your eyes and I felt it all the way in my body so I will not be coming back to the church. I just thought I'd let you know. Okay, that's fine. Go somewhere with somebody's eyes. They wearing shades. Go where they wearing some Ray-Bans or something. I don't know. That maybe you won't see it. Just go there. Go there. You know, when I say that, well, God bless you. Move on. Oh, so you just going to just let, let me go? Well, yeah. Yeah. You said you wanted to go! 
okay then stay <laughs> and I take my shades off <laughs> but they just uh, <laughs> you can't sign it but you, you know what God had to show me that don't have nothing to do with me I've done nothing to him that's somebody who has done this church after church if you picked up the phone and called the churches they've been to they've done this at every church they've been to Because there's something wrong with them. The fire of hell is in their eyes. Yeah, they come to church looking for the pastor to do something. Looking at you, you know, to see if you're going to speak. Then if you like you coming, they're just kind of trying to have, you know, you want them to speak. Then I won't have nothing to talk about. Just demons. And I've had to learn that they just, you know, as long as there's a door, they're going to come. But I can't take it personally because there's too many people in here that want to hear the truth, that came to save their families and grow together in a fellowship. So I got time for naysay. Worried about who you talking to? Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, how many is any? That's everybody. If you got a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, what? So also you do. Well, I forgive them, but I'm going to stay on this side of the church. I ain't going to ever go over there with it. Then you didn't forgive them. Ain't nobody clicking up at this church. Our worship to God starts with obedience. He has commanded that we repent to those we have hurt. Amen. James 5 and 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. People read this and think it's confessing your sins that you did with somebody else to other folks. That's not what it's saying. Confess your faults one to another. So if you have ought against somebody, you confess that to them. Go to him and say, hey, you know, this beef between us and man, things were said. Let's just, let's just, let's just end this. This ain't making no sense. We're in the same church and we got a problem with each other. That ain't nothing but the devil. So let's call it the devil and let's improve. Man, that'll be so much better. Confess your faults one to another and then pray for one another. Okay, let, 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 we good. Then let's have a word of prayer. Father God, help us to just let this go in the name of Jesus. The devil won't have no victory here. We won't be the cause of beef being in the church. Every church we go to, something happened. Every church we go to, we find each other. Yeah, we find each other. That's why we right here now praying. Every church, something is wrong. So help us with whatever is wrong. Confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. Healed, yes. Because beef, anger, aggression, all of those malice, they lead to physical ailments. In the church, the Bible said Jezebel will be cast in her bed, her sick bed. You keeping up mess in the church, we going to find something in your body. I'm preaching in this. Amen. Don't be amen about somebody else. Think about what I'm saying. That's what I hate. That's right. Biggest witch in there. Hat just tipping the witch at. That's right. That's right. Y'all better hear him. That's right. <laughs> Ooh, he be preaching. <laughs> witch. Be agreeing with me. I'm like, Paul, don't agree with me. Don't tell the truth to me. I don't want to hear your truth. Our worship to God starts with obedience. He has commanded that we repent 
Oh, I read that. Okay, let's go. The Holy Ghost will always bring things to our remembrance to help us repent. The Bible said the Holy Ghost will bring things to your remembrance. Why would he bring it to your remembrance? To help you repent and clean our hearts of anger and malice. See, because when you come before God, he sees your anger and malice instantly. So he don't want to hear what you got to talk about if you're talking through anger and malice. So repent. I can't keep it coming before the Lord with this and I'm backstabbing and gossiping behind folks' backs. I'm going to the God of all God that hears everything and sees everything and I'm going to come to him like he didn't hear it and see that. No matter how bad it was, God's grace is what? It's sufficient if we deal with it properly and biblically. Psalms 51 and 10 created me a what? A clean heart. What do you think that means? And renew a what? Right spirit within me. That means you can have a wrong spirit. Some folk got a wrong spirit about them. Oh, Pastor, how do I know I got a wrong spirit? Does wrong always find you? You're going to move five times in the church. You sat over there, then you sat there, then you sat over there, and wherever you sit, wrong comes and sits by you. So you pray. Created me a clean heart, renew a right spirit. I need a right spirit, not a Amen. This is good. Yeah. Encourage me, please. I received it. Yeah, this is, this, these are tough messages. You should see the faces. You know, one thing people don't realize is when I bring prophets in here, they see you. And they tell me who you are. They ain't tell me what's going on. <laughs> you know, like I remember I told y'all before I even brought people. Remember I told you, I said, sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. When I used to travel and speak, I was the guy that would come in and see stuff. And so I would preach and then after the message, we'd go to the office and I'd run them down. Got a witch at 5 o'clock. <laughs> witch at 6.30. That one over there is causing trouble. That one's talking about you and all in your face. That one hates your wife. Yeah, I used to be the one that did that. That was my job to come in and do that because I don't know nobody. So my discernment was on 100. See, that's where people mess up. They think they have discernment and they don't understand how discernment works. You ain't discerning humans. The Bible said it's discerning of spirits. So I don't, you can't discern human personalities. Because then you'd be done messed up and ran somebody off that should have been there and could have helped you. So you don't go looking at humans and I don't like, well, you better watch out. No, it ain't that. No, discernment of spirits. I see demons in folks. But in here, I love everybody. I'm around you all the time. So, you know, my discernment isn't as keen. So you bring somebody in from the outside. Mm -hmm. Can I? Matthew 5 and 25. Agree with thine adversary quickly while thou. Oh, did I read that? While thou art on the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the other most farthing. So, in other words, when you're having a disagreement, you got beef, all of that stuff, agree quickly. Get it fixed before it's time for judgment.
I'm sorry, I, I, I had to use it because some folk got this spirit. You're just an angry bird. Just a ah, angry. Always lunging at somebody. When you have had a fight with someone and you have offended one another, reconcile quickly. Look at somebody and say, reconcile quickly. Quickly. You know, the longer you sit there mad at somebody, the worse your thoughts will get. So we don't let nothing go on for years and years and years. Amen. Let me say this. Women wives in your house don't you be walking around with the silent treatment that's the worst thing you can do to a man other than hit him is the silent treatment you know why we ain't smart enough to figure out what's wrong with y'all <laughs> I didn't see that I didn't see that but <laughs> But we don't know. We just, we don't know. We want to. We just don't know. What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> we don't know. If he loved me, he'll figure it out. If he loved me, he'll remember. No, he won't. No. We're just not good at that part. We good at so we good at a lot of things, but not that. No. Most of the time, we was good at it. We wouldn't have done it to make you mad in the first place. That's simple logic. So come on, women, give us a break. We don't know. So when you have a fight or an argument and offend it, reconcile how quickly. I've been married 30 years. So when I reconcile quickly, when we have to, you know, we don't fight. We, don't, we hardly ever disagree. But when we do, I know there are certain times of day that the conversation is just not going to go as well <laughs> as it would have had it been a little later on. Sometimes people, it takes them a while to fully wake up. Like hours, hours and hours. Around noon. <laughs> Don't have no morning. Don't be trying to get it right in the morning. You're going to add to it with my woman. So I wait for the coming in there with a lot of talking. She do not like a whole lot of talking in the morning. <laughs> what you shaking your head for, Stacey? She do not like a whole lot of talking in the morning. It's like in the morning, I need to just make your breakfast and you just sit on there and shut up. I know that's what she be thinking. She loved me too much to say it. Just look at her. Shut up! See, I just think we need to talk about it. 30 years and you still in here. You still in here. <laughs> but it's true. But reconcile quickly. Don't you let no days pass and you walking around feeling a certain way in your heart about anybody, anyone. Especially a loved one. You know how fragile life is. You know life is a vapor according to the Bible. You might lose somebody. And never get to make that right. But you reconcile quickly and be forgiven. Before it becomes a what? Ooh, a root of bitterness in your heart. Once it's a root of bitterness it lives with you. And it just becomes the way you are. Bitter. Everybody knows you as bitter except you. You think you good. But everyone knows that's the bitter chick. That's the bitter dude. Hebrews 12 and 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest the root of bitterness springing up trouble you. See, because if that bitterness troubles you, guess what it's going to do? It's going to mess up a whole lot of people. 
Hurting people hurt people. That's why you got to get it taken care of quickly. Amen? Amen. Now, after service, when I hug you and shake your hand, please don't tell me what you was thinking about me and repent. I didn't hear it. I wasn't there. So there's no cause for that. I hate that. Y'all, that's a pet peeve of mine. Don't come tell me, Pastor, I just need to apologize. Why? Because I was thinking things about you, man. And I, you know, I was just, I was just thinking some things. I don't care. I didn't hear it. So don't tell me that. Can y'all not look at somebody and say, don't tell him that. Look at the other person and say, don't tell him that. Elder, I don't need to know. I just want to picture you like I see you. I don't want to know your innermost thoughts. Come on, tell you, I just want to say, hey, how you doing, sister? What? What? Do you see anything on me? Do you really want to know? No, I'm just playing. No, I don't see, I don't. I'm not looking for demons in you. I'm not. I'm not looking for demons. I just want to love you. I'm not looking for what you did last night to, to appear on you and I smell it on you. Is that the joint? I'm not like that. And preachers like that are miserable. Uh. Hey, Amen. I'm taking care of a wife and kids. I already got folk to take care of. I ain't trying to take care of you like that. Pastor, are you sensing anything? Anything? What are you, I mean, you, I can take it. I can take it. Yes, you can. Now take it outside. Get away. We in there watching the game, man. We in there watching the game. Had a dude. I was in there watching the game, Jeff. Come up to me, Pastor. I had this dream. Did you dream who won? So I can make this money? Well then shut up! <laughs> Bruh! <laughs> I don't bet on games, so somebody gonna take that. You know they're going to take that and create a whole website about it. <laughs> when folks hate me, they still love me. They can't ever stop thinking about it. God will hold us accountable if we refuse to rectify the situation. We will be spiritually imprisoned until we are ready to deal with the matter. Y'all didn't get him a mic? <laughs> Spiritually imprisoned until we're ready to deal with it. Yeah, God got you on lockdown. Don't come asking me for nothing until you go deal with that. <laughs> In the same church? Me and my wife, man, when we... <laughs> We would go to people's houses. They'd invite us over because, you know, we, we, wherever we were, we were probably the youth leaders or something. They'd bring us to their house. And, man, they would talk about other members so bad. And my wife would be like, my God, in the same church? Mm -hmm. And so and so and mm -hmm. you know what I heard. And mm -hmm. see, they say, they say, who is they? Boy, that they is going to hell. They is going to hell. They going to hell. They don't say it way too much <laughs> about folks. They said it. And we just be sitting there, man. In my mind, I'm thinking, man, if I ever, Lord, if you ever call me to pastor church, please don't give me a bunch of folk like this. I just don't want a bunch of hogs and pigs. <laughs> call them hogs and pigs because the demons went and got in the hogs when God cast them out. I don't need nobody harboring demons 
old hog. <laughs> and see <laughs> Miserable self. But you, those people are spiritually in prison. God wants us behaving like real kingdom citizens and not criminals. You're in the kingdom. Why are you acting like a criminal? Colossians 3 and 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which we have done. And there is no respect of persons. This will not rectify every situation, however, because there are angry birds among us. You can't make the angry bird happy because he's an angry bird. So the right situation come, he's going to run into something. So this would not rectify every situation because there are those that are created for malice and retribution. Yeah, and I know who you are and I know there's no hope. But I have to keep hope and pray that God would do something. But I know that, you know, most of the times this is just somebody going to be in there and that's the way they're going to be. They have a contrite heart and their offense is not really because of you. So don't take it personal. It don't have nothing to do with you. They were like that before they met you. Proverbs 22 and 24. Make no friendship with an angry bird. <laughs> Can't be friends with an angry bird because at any moment. Ah! Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Amen. Amen. Summary. Yeah, I took my time. It's a little long, but everything needed to be said. Some folk need to second guess their membership. You might be on the wrong ship. This fellowship and in all fellowshipping with the saints we must be careful that we are behaving like children of God and not children of the gods amen. amen we must make sure we do not carry any odd against our fellow saints and friends if we feel they have wronged us we must never look at somebody and say never we must never repeat it to anyone before going directly to them first. That, that deserved a standing ovation. Get up and clap. Thank you, baby. Never! Look at somebody say never. Never repeat it. Never repeat it. If we feel they have wronged us, we must never repeat it. Never repeat it. Look at somebody and say, never repeat it. Never repeat it to another person if you haven't gone to the person first. And in most cases, it'll get resolved. Because most of the time, it's a misunderstanding and it's you. But if not, then follow the scriptures on handling it. Go get an elder. Me, You know, the Bible tells you how to handle that. Then if it needs to be brought before the church, it will be. But I guarantee you, it ain't that bad. It's you. You know why? Because there's multiple people you feel like that about. Everybody ain't crazy. Man, I'm preaching it here. Well, we may have to close the wall next week. We should never listen to or entertain people tearing down the brethren because of what they feel was done to them without first talking to the offender. That's not fair. You're going to run, run folks down with your personality. With, with no rebuttal. Because of the internet, center net, People are able to spread rumors, gossip, slander without dealing with the per people in person. 
That makes folks real big and bad, don't it? This causes things to be said without any substance of validity, yet it is, it is accepted as fact by people looking for a life online. See, when you got a life outside of the internet, you don't look at life, you don't look at people on the internet as real life. You look at it as that's the internet. I have a reality, that's not reality. But if you don't have a reality or your reality is tied to the internet, then. Oh, I know I'm preaching. Yeah, I just preached. Yeah, you know how to look at them pictures on Instagram and say, she don't look like that in person. Broke her arm trying to take that angle. Next picture got a cast on. <laughs> but some folks, ooh, they're just so beautiful. Oh, she's so pretty. They see it as reality. Because they hate their real reality. That's all the metaverse is. An escape from reality. People that don't like their life, they go create another one. This causes things to be said without any substance or validity. Yet, oh, I already read that. And yet it is accepted as fact. It causes people to be hated before they are even introduced to you. Wow. You hate somebody because I saw that. <laughs> I can't get it out. You read it on the internet and somebody made you hate somebody. I'll tell you something stupider than that. This is, this is ten times stupider, uh, Brother Herman. You hate somebody that you really know because of something somebody on the internet said. And the real dope part is you loved them yesterday. In some cases, you loved them for 10 years. <laughs> Boy, it causes people, it causes people to feel they have a reason to dislike or persecute a person that they don't even know. This is confusion from the devil because people did not put these principles of Jesus' sermon into action. You have to give people a chance to what? Repent. Or well, how about even give them a chance to know why you are offended? Did you go to them and talk to them? Or did you just go upload it on Facebook and talk to them? So all while you was around them, you thought everything was good? Boy, this ain't God's way. But when your heart was already contrite and you were damaged by past trauma, it's just easier. To find fault and counsel people because they remind you of something in your past. Oh, I'm preaching. Am I preaching, Dr. Bush? I'm preaching. Thank you, sir. The way of the transgressor is hard. That's a hard life. It's a hard life to be mad at somebody you don't know. And it's a harder, harder life to be mad at somebody you love, but somebody told you to be mad at them. That's hard. How do you sleep? The way of the one that ignores these principles is even harder. What a hard life to live when you walk around with hatred, malice, jealousy, envy, and strife surrounding everything you do. And every thought of your heart permeates with how you despise another. How? How you walk around like that? God's way. Look at somebody say, God's way is so much better. Look at somebody and say, God's way is so much better. What tastes better than bitterness? Sweetness. What feels better than hatred? Love. What sounds better than gossip? Encouragement. What looks better than envy? Blessings. 
When we learn to accept the true message of Jesus and apply it in our everyday fellowship with the saints, we will live a better life and destroy the works of the flesh. Amen. Colossians 5 and... Ooh, getting hungry. I can't see. What is it? Three. Oh, fancy writing. <laughs> Colossians 3. I got visions of wings in my future. I speak it in Jesus' name. Manifest wings. Manifest presence of the wings. Colossians 3 and 12. <laughs> Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Listen, y'all, and I want you to hear this. Hear what he's saying. This is how we're supposed to be. And look, this message may have made you chop suey today. You may get up and fall down because your leg is gone. <laughs> this message may have done a job on you. Good. Go make it right. Just make it right. Don't walk around with no guilt. Don't walk around feeling guilty. Don't walk around feeling weird. Just go make it right. Get it over. What? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of what? Mercies. Not just one mercy. Mercies. Kindness. Humbleness of mind. Oh, gosh. Because if you humble your mind, you don't have a problem apologizing. You have a problem apologizing because of pride. Humble your mind. You ain't nobody. You are nobody. You, do you know that? Let me tell you. Ain't nobody in here but Jesus. We all a bunch of nobodies. God could replace us all by batting his eyes. Have another freckle faced dude up preaching and have your seat taken by somebody. Whole new band, everybody. We all be replaced. Because we're nobody. Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on love. Which is the bond of what? Man, if we want to have the bond of perfectness, it's going to take us loving one another. You got family members that's crazy, don't you? Ooh, somebody said, woo! Rashata. Somebody spoke in tongues. It's not talking about that family. It's going to be all right. You got crazy family members. Well, there's going to be crazy folks in the church, but they're family members. So we're going to love them. Amen. Put up with them. They may, everybody ain't going to act like you. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are come. The peace of, see if the peace of God rules in your heart, we can be one body. Yes. Peace of God. Yes, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing who? One another, one another. in psalms and hymns and what? Yes. Spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. If you can. If you fall over, somebody next to you, hold them up. Some toes got crushed, but that's okay. That's why we in here, man. So we're going to pray. We're going to trust and we're going to believe God. That we're just going to make everything right. Right? Anybody need forgiveness? Repent? Need a pathway to repent? Sometimes you need a pathway to repentance. Open the door, God. Let them call me. Let something happen. Work this out. But let's just make this right. I just want to get it right. Come on up. I'm going to pray with you. Believe and trust God with you. 
just, I'm just not walking around with it no more. I'm not carrying it no more. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Ain't nobody here prideful or nothing, man. You should have seen my list. My Lord have mercy. But you got to do it. Just clean your heart. This is heart clearing time. I need to let this go. I need to forgive this person because this is immobilizing me. This is keeping me from being who I need to be. This is messing my marriage up. Oh, this is messing me up from getting married. Can't carry this and expect a man to find me or expect to find a good woman because you're judging women by what you went through and what somebody else did and you won't let that go. So we're just not going to have this in our way, especially in the fellowship. We're going to love each other in here. We're going to love each other. We're going to let it go. Might be a mother, might be a father. We're going to give them a pass. They get a pass today. They get a big pass because look at me. Look at all I did. Man, I could have been out in the streets a wretch undone. But God saved me, changed me, and he can do the same for them. So I'm going to have vows of mercies going forward. Anybody else? Everyone bow your heads. Father God, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for this word that you've given us, this message. And though hard, hard to the, oh, it was hardcore. And though it was hardcore, Father God, we understand your expectations for us as being saints and becoming saints. What you expect. You don't expect any less from us than you did the apostles that wrote these things. You don't expect any less of us than Jesus who walked the earth. Father God, in our humanness, we have to be able to adopt your spirituality and walk according to your morality. So God, we have to forgive. We have to let go. We have to treat people right. right. Father God, we have to not slander. We have to not gossip. We can't tear down. Father God, we can't cancel people. We can't end people. We can't destroy. God, we can't do any of that. That's the devil. So we ask right now, Father God, that you would forgive us for those thoughts. Forgive us for thoughts of hatred thoughts of malice, thoughts of payback, thoughts of wishing death, thoughts of wishing bad on somebody, thoughts Father God, all those thoughts, we ask that you forgive us for those thoughts God we had no right to think that way when you've done so much for us we had no right to think harmful thoughts to others when you've saved us from so much harm, we have no right to cancel anyone when we should have been cancelled long ago, we have no right Father God to say rocker, to say someone is worthless, to say there's nothing good about them when you found good in us. So God, we say, forgive us now. Forgive us, Lord, for hurting our brothers, for hurting our sisters, for hurting our mothers and fathers, for hurting our children. Father God, forgive us for the things we've done. And I pray right now, God, that you would elevate us out of that place of shame and regret and bring us to the place father god where we can stand boldly and declare your word and cast out devils and pray for the sick and put our arms around those in despair love on them show them the true love that you showed us show them grace and mercy father god win a soul unto you because of the love we show because of the togetherness because we're fitly joined let us exemplify you, God, so that the kingdom will be blessed by it. And everyone just lift your hands. And Father, I pray for this wonderful congregation that you've blessed us with. These wonderful, loving people. God, we're all victims of something. We all got issues because of somebody. But Father God, I thank you because these are lovely people. And I pray your blessings upon each and every one of them. All of these lovely people that have entrusted me with their families and entrusted this church with their leadership all of them father god we thank you and i pray a special blessing that we would all get along that we would all get along and love one another father god that we will pray for one another father god that we will have each other's backs father god that we would protect each other father god that we will speak good of each other god that we would encourage one another god that we will speak love to one another we will speak blessings 
in the name that is above every name. We want ABC, God, to be a sanctified place where we are living according to your word and treating each other the right way. So we pray for these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, put your hands together and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now put your arms around somebody and tell them I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Come on, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Go to somebody you had beef with. I'm just playing. Hug somebody and say, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah. 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 I love you. I love you. And you can't do nothing about it. Hallelujah. 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 Love covers a multitude of sins. Love co covers a multitude of mishaps, a multitude of error, a multitude of mistakes. Love them anyway. I'm going to love you anyway. I don't care what you say about me. You can't make me stop loving you. Hallelujah. All right, PJ, watch out now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to love each other. We're going to love each other. I also want to say before I put the mic up, thank y'all so much for coming out Tuesday. That was an amazing experience to be able to preach a message all the way in China, Beijing, to that group of people. They were so blessed by it. And to have an audience here to preach to, I wasn't expecting that many people to come out. That made me feel, y'all, let me tell you, I traveled this world for 20 years by myself. Maybe my wife went with me sometime. Maybe Elder Aaron went, maybe Elder Trent then went with us wherever, but for the most part, that was it. But to actually do the truth behind hip hop, because that's what I did. To actually do the truth behind hip hop and have family in here with me I came to y'all thank you that felt amazing that felt amazing so thank y'all so much for coming out and experiencing that come on elder